Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Tuesday, the 17th week in ordinary time. Today's Mass is still going to be offered for you. If you're joining us, it's going to be offered for your families. It's going to be offered for the intentions you are seeking God's grace for today. If there is something that is bringing undue pressure on you, my prayers are that God may deliver you that God may free you and that God may give you peace today. I also pray for those who have asked our prayers during this last period and whatever their needs are, that God may help address them. I pray for those who are sick from this virus, especially those in critical care. Pray for those in our hospital here, that God may help them know and find quick healing and recovery. Continue to pray for our front men and women who are fighting this virus on every side, our doctors and nurses, our researchers, our police department, our emergency workers, our fire department, that God may protect and keep them safe, our men and women of our military. Pray for them and pray for their families. I'd also like to pray for all those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray that God may grant them the blessings of this most memorable day for them. I'll invite you to bring your intentions. Let us offer them together for God's mercy. Our opening hymn today is Companions on the Journey. We are companions on the journey. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we bear is a hope we share. For we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other. No longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care. By the strength of those who care. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, I invite you to join us and let us offer this sacrifice together for your needs, for my needs, and for the needs of all those that we love and care about. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Let my eyes stream with tears, day and night without rest, over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wounds. If I walk out in the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, 
those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest foraging the land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for a time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O oh Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spawn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Among the nation's idols, there are, is there any that reigns, that gives rain? Or can, there, can the mere heavens send showers? Is it not you alone, O God, our God, to whom we look? You alone have done all of these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Let the prisoner's sign come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The seed of the word, the seed is the word of God. Christ is the soul. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parables of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is a son of man. The field is a world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The wheat are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as wheat are collected and burned up with the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and he will collect out of his kingdom all who, who cause others to sin and all evil doers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be wailing and grinding up teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And whoever has ears to hear ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I am very excited and happy that you are able to join us and to worship with us today. The last several months has brought us a lot of bad news. Whether it's the passing of someone we know, someone who is sick and scared to go to the hospital, scared because they might get infected, or someone who is just worried that their job may become more, more costly than they could imagine because it might lead to 
bringing this virus home to their families or your kids who cannot go to school. There is so much, or your businesses that have just gone down south. So there is so much bad news during this period, so much so that we could get caught up in an expectation of more bad news so that every day we wake up looking for the next bad thing to happen. And we remain in a mindset of negative expectation, of negative outcomes. Now, that's the, that does have consequences on our health and our well-being, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. And so today, I would like to say this to you. Take the time and tune off. Tune off. You know how, um, naturally, the way we reboot our phones is that or with the way we charge our phones is that to get it connected to to your wall socket whatever you know to charge it that's how you get it to power it you know yeah but there are times where to really power it you have to turn it off to fix whatever box that may have um, affected the functioning of your phone so so this time all i'm asking is just turn off all the negative news, all the bad news, and you know that 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 negative channel in your mind that is always seeking for the next bad thing. Today, for just one moment, I, I want to take a time and think about something that is still happy, something that is still good in your life, something that is still good about your life, something that is still good in your family, whether it's your children, something that. You, you can still be grateful for and be thankful for in your life. Maybe it's just, just your own existence because, yeah, based on my work schedule, yeah, I could have been dead. Who knows? I could have, anyone else could have contracted this disease and died. But there must be something that should give you hope, that should make you put a smile on your face, make you say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what that is for you. I know what that is for me. So I, I want to take this moment. And think about and if you think deep enough you realize there are still many more wonderful things in spite of all of these negative trails of bad news that there is some things to still be thankful for and so i want you to take the time and focus on those things every day you wake up in the morning focus on those things they help play your mind and keep you more purposeful and keep you more um, invested on doing the things that will take you to the end of all of this so that's the first thing I want us to think about today. My reflections with you this morning, or my reflection with you this morning will be from the gospel reading. And my interpretation of this parable will be a little bit different from what the Lord said. Um, here the Lord said, the sower of the seed is a son of man. That is, is him, Jesus. And the field is the world. I want to see me as the sower of the seed in the person of Jesus, in the place of Jesus. And I want to see you as also the sower of the seed. And for this one moment, I want to take your children or your grandchildren as a field. I want to take your family as a field. And I want to ask you, if you had the privilege and the opportunity today to begin to sow seeds in your child's life or in your grandchild's life, what kind of seed would you like to sow? You know there are some who have made, maybe established, already established bank accounts where they put in a little money for their grandchildren already. They're sowing seeds for their grandchildren, sowing for their financial safety, their financial security, and making sure everything is well with them when they are not there. But there are so many of us who have forgotten to sow the seed that endures forever, which is God's word. I want to think about the last time you even spoke God's word to your children or to your grandchildren. It's so uncomfortable. And yet you are the sower. And a sower who doesn't sow. And somehow expects that God is going to be to do everything just so that our children or our grandchildren will turn out very, very good when we have not done our part. 
And so today, I want you to take the time also to examine, you know, your role as the sower of God's word. You are the vehicle carrying God's word to your family. How often, whether at table or just with normal discussion with your children or your grandchildren, do you teach them God's word? Because whether you like it or not, if you don't teach them God's word, someone is going to teach them something. And the enemy is going to sow some seed because there is going to be sowing seeds anyway. If you don't sow, someone else is going to sow those seeds. But someone is going to sow dangerous as a weed. And some of our children are outgrown right now with weed because we, do not, we did not sow the good seeds in their lives. And so as I look at this text, I'm saying to myself, wow, when I see the children that, you know, do all kinds of things, they are, you know, we, we, hear, we hear all kinds of things on social media and what our children do today. I'm saying to myself, how did it all go wrong? What kind of seed did we sow? Or did we sow any seed at all? Or we just allowed that, that whole land to follow? And so the enemy sowed, decided to sow some bad seeds in their lives. The, there are consequences, my dear friends, when we don't sow the good seed. And we do have an opportunity to do that today. We do have an opportunity to change the trajectory of events in our children and our grandchildren. And the best seats are not words. The best seats are actions. Because we cannot say one thing and then do something else and expect the kid to do what we said and not what we did. We cannot hear, our, our, our kids cannot hear us use bad language and somehow we expect them to be decent in what they say and how they speak. We cannot have our kids see us be violent and disrespectful of your wife or your husband and expect them to treat their wives and their husbands differently. It doesn't work that way. So we pray, dear friends, that God may help us. The psalmist said it so well, for the glory of your name, deliver us. We need to be delivered mightily from all of the things that tie our hands, making it impossible for us to have the pride to share God's word especially with the most deserving, our children and our grandchildren. They are the most deserving of the seeds of God's word. And yet our hands are tied by whatever it is, your own fears, your own anxieties, to share the greatest treasure. Yet we have bank accounts and all of those things that cannot serve them beyond this life. And we fail to make the real investments that can serve them here and serve them hereafter. Pray that God may deliver us from this, from the, the foolishness. I call it foolishness because wisdom would put us on the path to do what is best for our children across the board, not just for now. But, but so many of us are so obsessed and so focused on how we can guarantee their temporary existence and not minding how we can both guarantee their temporary existence and also a, a, a guarantee their survival and their thriving. On the other side may God help us may God remind us of what is important and what is not may God remind us when this thing is important and when it's not and may God give us the grace to do what's important for our children and for our, ch our grandchildren so always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of Almighty God and God that may God deliver you and free you amen let us pray. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask. So let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest things we do. For the church which dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, that she may continue to be that instrument of grace for families and especially for young children who have derailed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations 
and for persons enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, that they may find courage to fight for the freedoms of all people and to seek a more hospitable and generous society for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who are tormented by forces so strong as to derail God's plans in their lives, that they may seek God's help and deliverance, that our good God may respond to their petitions and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young men and women discerning the call to the priesthood and the religious life, that the Holy Spirit may nurture their hearts and souls and prepare their ears and minds to hearken to the call of God. And their lives may be a blessing to God's church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers, O God, we pray that you who know their needs, their struggles, their fears, their tortures, and all that besets them at this time, that you may step into their lives and deliver them and give them some respite, O God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for the suffering, for the bereaved, for children who have no one to care or love them, for all abused children around the world, for those who are exploited and trafficked through across borders without protections, for those in jail, that God, who knows the circumstances and struggles of all of his children, that he may send his angels to watch and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or anniversaries today, that God may grant them the blessings of this day and give them many opportunities in the future. For those who have died, that they may know rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for your caring. Give us an answer for the needs we have, list, we have raised before you. And please give us peace by the grace of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. 
And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave each disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread through all the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer this, let us offer, offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to you and your loved ones, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And now grace for spiritual communion. Most beneficent God, your blessings are ever renewed, ever present, and abundantly able to nurture, to nourish, and to redeem and deliver all of your children. 
I thank you, O oh God, through this sacrament, that they will participate only spiritually today. That they may feel your blessing, your deliverance, and the nourishment that this grace, this sacrament brings. These favors we ask of your mercy, and are confident that you will grant through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, that the power of God cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you again for joining us. I pray that God may bless you, that God may be with you and that God may deliver you from whatever oppresses you right now. If you forget everything I said today, remember that you remain the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. For the closing hymn, we will sing, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can be. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee, every hour, stay thou near by, temptations look when thou art I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee.